First Sergeant Kemp here with Company D, 2nd United States Sharpshooters. And Corporal Soderling with Company D, 2nd United States Sharpshooters. And today we are here to talk to you about the duties of a private. Now, there are a lot of period manuals that were published by uh, civilian groups, uh, state militias, as well as the federal government that go into explicit detail about the exact military duties expected of privates in the service. Um, Couch's uh, NCO uh, Customs of Service also covers the duties of a private. Um, a Beatles Dime series uh, talks about uh, the duties of a private, uh, definitions. Uh, there are also different uh, School of the Soldier manuals that were published in order to guide new privates to the Army as to their, their duties and expectations and their general knowledge. Uh, if you go to our website at secondusss.com and go to our research library, we have some of those manuals already linked for you, and you can also do your own independent research on places like Google Library and find these original manuals with which to uh, develop your research into period expectations of a private. But going into sort of the, the requirements of reenacting as well as the hobby, there are sort of two main ideas to keep in mind as you develop your private impression. And those are being self-contained and self-sufficient, as well as being technically and tactically proficient. So I would say that one of the first duties, uh, James, is uh, making sure that your kit is ready to go, ready for an event. Yeah, that's definitely one of the most important things. Um, even if you don't have the money or you don't know if you're going to be doing reenacting, if this is your first event or whatever, at least know where you stand in terms of what your unit expects you to bring yourself and what your unit's going to be able to provide for you. Uh, some units want you to have a full kit right from the get-go. Some units have a dozen full kits stuck in a box somewhere that they're just waiting to give to people to let them borrow for an event so that they can get into reenacting. Yeah, uh, really sort of the, the, the private is such a critical role in any military and it's really important that it, get, it gets its due and part of that is being prepared, having your gear ready, having your gear complete, and being able to get the most use and the most longevity out of your gear. And a lot of your units are going to be having those expectations that uh, you have a certain kit. So are you communicating with your company's organizers as to who are your approved vendors? Uh, what parts of your kit do they want to have ready to go before your first event? as well as um, what sort of preparedness are you taking to be prepared as you develop your kit. Some impressions are gonna be more expensive than others. So if you don't have the initial financial output and you know, you're know you gonna start with loaner gear, then you're gonna to want to, to start small with um, what's available to you, but do you have a plan to accumulate the best kit that's available to you uh, for your budget. They're, they want to make sure that you're making a proper plan to be prepared to have the best impression for the hobby. Exactly. Um, and completeness is important. Um, you know, one of the big downsides with mainstream reenacting is, you know, they'll just get just enough equipment uh, to shoot their weapon and have an appearance of a uniform, but if they had to live out of their knapsack, there's no way they could ever do it. And sometimes they don't even have a knapsack. So what is the level of completeness that you want with your uniform? <clears throat> um, and then along with having the completeness of your kit, do you have the tools and the knowledge to care for your gear and maintain it? Um, because during, during the war, um, as, and it's also important in reenacting, um, you, you were allotted a certain amount of gear by the United States Army. If you mistreated it or you wore through it before your next allotment, that was out of your paycheck. Yeah. Uh, so it's it's one thing to make sure that you you, you have your gear, but you have to make sure it's uh, cared for, it's clean, you know how to sew buttons. Do you have a sewing kit? That's all part of preparedness. Um, one of the most common things of new reenactors is tearing the, the crotch out of their pants. I did that today, running through a Blackberry bush. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> I've been doing this for a while. Yeah, it happens all the time. So if you tear the seat out of your pants at an event, are you prepared to get back to camp and repair it uh, proficiently? 
there's no way around it. If you're a reenactor, you have to be able to sew to some degree. Yeah. It's just, that's how it works. Yeah, absolutely. And, and sewing can also save you money. Like, if you're on a low budget, uh, some of the best gear comes in kits. So, knowing a few basic stitches, and we have a, a video on uh, reenactor sewing basics that could get you started. You can sew your own trousers, your own shirts, uh, your own fatigue blouses, even of high quality gear, and save yourself quite a bit of money. Um, gear care also goes um, into caring for your leather goods. Uh, do you know what leather oils uh, work best for you or what your company is looking for? Are you uh, maintaining your rifle? Uh, well, so one, are you proficient in the, the weapon that you are assigned in your company? And do you have all the tools necessary to clean and keep it safe and functional ready for events? Yeah, the, the Sharps rifle that we use is one of the most complex rifles that you can use during the Civil War and, and a Civil War reenactment period. So one of the very first things that we start doing from day one with our new privates is we, ha we help them uh, completely, uh, what was the period term? Was dismount. Completely dismount their rifle and clean it every single day of the event. It's also the only way to keep them running. But <laughs> yeah, yeah. So uh, during the wartime, completely dismounting your rifle uh, was frowned upon, or you could only do it with the permission of a superior officer. Um, but in Company D, in order to learn all the, the, the different parts of a Sharps rifle, and all sort of the, the science and best practice to thoroughly cleaning and running the Sharps rifle, uh, we do the whole breakdown. So everyone starts from the same ground level as to what requi what's required for a clean weapon. And then if you acquire your own weapon, then we can you know work with you on what sort of field cleaning, yeah, what's quick. What's the, the bare minimum yeah. you need to get it running for the second day? Yeah, exactly. When it comes to loaner gear, you gotta make sure you, you're prepared to clean it the way that your company or the person who owns it is expecting. Um, so yeah, make sure you have the, the tools, uh, the implements, the, the solvents, or whatever you need to, uh, to uh, clean your weapon as well as care for your gear. Or again, if you're just starting reenacting, at least know that you'll have that, those things available if you can't quite spare the money for them just yet. Yeah, so yeah, also, yeah, that, that hits at the expectation that if you are using this gear and it's not yours yet, know that you are expected to return it in at least as good a condition as you received it for that event. Um, hitting again on self-sufficiency, this comes down to your personal preparedness. Uh, hygiene, health, uh, food, uh, fire making, cooking, and your, your sleeping basics. So what, what do you need to have a good time uh, at an event? Yeah, so uh, one of the ones I heard there was food. Yeah. Again, you need to know what's being provided. You just need to have that communication with your company. And sometimes we have food. My wife cooks for us quite mm -hmm. often, but not always. And you need to know if you are expected to fend for yourself. And if you are, you need to be competent enough at feeding yourself that you're not just going to make yourself sick. Uh, <laughs> yes. We had one of our people who's been with us for quite a while. When he first started, he ate a block of cheese one day. And that was the <laughs> only thing he ate. And he was so incredibly that it was almost fun. It was 90 degrees that weekend, <laughs> yeah. So uh, you just need to be competent enough to feed yourself. You need to yeah. know how to take care of yourself water-wise. Mm -hmm. And uh, you said more stuff there, too. Well, well yeah, so um, uh, if, if you have dietary concerns, uh, make sure that you are prepared for that. Uh, make sure you can cook your own food. Uh, don't expect that everything you could possibly need is going to be available to you or that other people are going to let you just use their gear. Because if you're new, they may not, like, this is like really expensive custom-made tinware. You're a noob. I don't know if you're going to like throw that thing on the fire and melt my solder yeah. and put me out 300 bucks or you're not, going to, you're not going to return it clean and it's going to be caked. It's like, no, this is part of my impression. Um, bring, you know, a lot of canned goods are great for beginners, pre-made sandwiches. Um, and then keep in mind the, the weather conditions, the physical exertion. Um, if it's 100 <clears throat> degrees, you don't want to be cooking a soup for an hour. Yeah, <laughs> or like, you know, yeah, if, uh, if you're doing a lot of physical activity that maybe you're not used to, uh, don't hop in your car, you know, two or three times in an event and like pound Taco Bell. Uh, that, that is not going to do well for your, your, your physical readiness. So uh, 
fruits, vegetables, managing your electrolytes, managing your, your sodium intake, uh, refreshing, replenishing foods are going to be really important. And if you don't have a lot of uh, campfire cooking skills, uh, work on pre-made foods or, or talk to your, uh, your company commanders or NCOs about ideas because uh, if you're going, if you're diving straight into authentic campaigning, it's going to be military rations, and if you have a, like a desk job, climate-controlled environment, and you eat whatever you want, and then you go to this really austere, um, high-carb, high-fat, high-sodium diet, plus extreme physical activity in extreme heat... You're not going to be happy. Yeah, it's going to shock you really bad. So if you know you're going to be expected to use period rations... Start eating that stuff at home, uh, a meal a meal a day. You know, have some salt pork, make some slush, uh, make some Johnny Cakes. Now start prepping your body to get in the, uh, accustomed to the dietary restrictions or availability of the event. Um, and then sleeping arrangements. Yes. Um, you know what you're doing for sleeping. <laughs> yeah. It's as simple as that. If you are at an event where the weather is going to allow it and it's something you, you like doing or are willing to do, then sleeping arrangements can be as little as a blanket yeah. and enough wood to keep the fire going all night. Mm -hmm. And sometimes that's just not enough. It could be raining, it could be really windy, and if you, you just need to know what you're supposed to be doing for sleeping, and if you are supposed to provide that for yourself, then you need to provide it for yourself. Yeah. Again, it just comes down to communicating with your company. Yeah, um, and yeah, especially if you're if you're sleeping kit, you know the the, the issue sleeping kit was very basic. Uh, but say you're starting out, you know maybe you're, you're 14. It's your first year. You can take a rifle on the field, and you know you still have your sleeping bag from home. Um, talk to your company. It's like, hey, what color of blanket would hide my sleeping bag during the day? Um, or maybe you are in a family and you don't have you know the A tents or the wall tents or whatever you need. Uh, ask about, hey, is there going to be a modern camp available? Uh, so all that self-sufficiency, being self-contained, do you have your own garbage can? Do you know what to do with that? Uh, do you have medications and sunscreen? You want to be happy and healthy um, and self-reliant uh, because you could be uh, a menace really quick. Uh, it's like, oh, uh, do you have a fork I can borrow? Uh, do you have any soap? Uh, I left my toothbrush at home. It's like, I didn't bring a blanket. <laughs> um, you, you can you can wear yourself pretty thin on your company if you don't think about the, the basics of your own personal needs and happiness. And that it goes for the older guys there too. If you aren't 14, if you're <laughs> yes. 50 and you know you can't sleep on the ground, then don't sleep on the ground. Find some other way. If it's a modern camp, if you have an A10 that you just stick a Cabela's cot in, <laughs> yeah. if you are going to lay down and then not be able to get back up, because you slept on the ground and you really shouldn't have, then that's not doing anybody any favors. Yeah, and and there's there are units out there that can, that can accommodate a wide range of needs. So you may find a unit that well, yeah, anything's good, and you may find an authentic campaigner. It's like if it wasn't issued, it doesn't count. That may not be a unit that can address your needs uh, effectively. So have those conversations uh, ahead of time. It's really good. Um, then, of course, let's get into the private business, um, soldier knowledge. So it's going to be the, the bare minimum is going to know the school of the soldiers, uh, whether it's Hardee's or Casey's, um, whoever, yeah, point sets, if you do dismount it or something like that. Um, know the basics of your, your soldier equipment and your, your technical and tactical proficiency. Um, do you know how to move, uh, move your rifle around in the different positions? Do you know what you're supposed to do for parade? Uh, do you know what the different commands are on the battlefield? And then situational awareness for safety. Um, you know, everything was designed in the military so that everyone's safe while firing. It's really easy when you're a brand new reenactor to be super excited and you're like, you'll be like, you'll race out in front of the line and nobody behind you can fire because you're ruining the safety distance on everybody. Or, heaven forbid, you know, you're distracted messing with your firearm, and you're behind the line, you pop around off, and then your, your comrades next to you have ringing ears because you just had this huge safety violation. Um, so make sure that, and it helps. Like Even if you're going to your first event, uh, you can check our website. We have links to manuals. You can do your independent research, talk to the company. You know, they all have Facebook pages. You know, you can call or text them. 
and they can tell you what manual to start reading and what's the bare minimum that you should be aware of. So even if you don't understand it, you'll recognize the terminology and, and the order of it. Um, and then your expectation as a private is to master that knowledge. Not only can you go from you know shoulder arms to right shoulder shift, but why are those uh, positions a certain number of movements? Um, why, uh, why is the army step 28 inches? Uh, how many uh, steps per minute is quick time versus common time and why does that matter? So your long-term goal is to understand the why of your technical proficiency as, as an infantry private in Civil War reenacting. Um, the manuals, um, Couts, uh, this is a fantastic one to pick up. Uh, they have reproductions of these. Again, it's the 1865 Customs of Service for non-commissioned officers and soldiers. There's a wealth of information in here. It's practically the book that inspired this video. Yeah, it really <laughs> is. Um, but there are tons of other manuals, and Couch really hits on the, the concept of um, a private uh, really is responsible for using their time wisely. Yeah. Because uh, it's, it's one thing, you, it can be really hot. You know, you go, you know, people think like, oh, reenacting is just about doing battles. And you go out, you, you sweat a bunch, you pound a bunch of water, and you go back and you sleep all day. Um, that's not what soldier life was like back then. They still had extra duty daily duty, they had work details, and soldiers were still expected to learn uh, the customs of service and learn their expectations and study and read and become proficient as a soldier rather than just mindlessly follow what they're commanded to do. There's a, a little line in, in Couch's book there, and I'm going to paraphrase it a little bit. Uh, he says something along the lines of how the military life is a combination of every possible art and trade. And at some point or another, there's going to be a situation that requires knowledge of one of those arts and trades. And whoever can say, I know this the best, is going to be the one that prevails in that situation. Yeah. And that applies to reenacting just as much. It's like sewing, yeah. or cooking food, cleaning your rifle, cleaning your rifle, uh, making a fire. Making a fire. You just, these are the kinds of things that you're going to be encountering as you're both camping outside and doing the expensive clothes things that we do. Yeah, yeah, and it really comes down to uh, uh, what, is, what, what are you adding as a value as a soldier? Yeah. Um, are you an asset or a liability? Yeah. Do people have to cover and fill in after you or fix what you've done? Or are you Johnny on the spot? And that, that really comes down to um, initiative. One thing that really sets uh, privates apart and really kind of sets you on that leadership path is the corporals are chosen from the best privates. And so, you know, private scene, you may think like, oh, I only do what I'm ordered to do. It's like, well... You're not getting promoted. <laughs> yeah, yeah you're, you're doing, congratulations, you're doing the bare minimum. Um, but what really will help you stand out to your NCOs and especially your officers, it's like, you know, if you're out of firewood, you don't have to wait to be ordered to go on a firewood detail by a corporal. Um, if someone's, uh, you like to say like, you know, it's like, oh, my canteen's empty. Who needs a canteen? <laughs> um, if you see something done, jump in and take initiative and help out with your comrades because in the military, it's like, yeah, we're reenacting. Um, yeah, there are some actual vets, but most of us are just plain army. We have no military service. Our, our rank is, you know, kind of pretend. And so is the, the power that goes along with it. It's, it's play acting, um, but you still want to kind of pay honor to sort of those traditions and those expectations uh, and that sort of sense of discipline and camaraderie that go along with being a private. Private, So have that sense of initiative, step up, help out, um, and uh, you'll, you'll be well liked for that. Um, and the other thing too, and this goes back to initiative, is up training. So the bare minimum is you need to know the school of the soldier. Read the entire manual. Um, in our company, uh, you know, it, it, we, uh, we up train. So if nobody showed up, James could run the company for an event. And that's the way we like to operate. He should, um, everyone should know that at least the next rank up uh, proficiently should that opportunity arise. Because you're always trying to look forward um, to be more educated and better prepared as a soldier. Um, yeah, and then and that also goes to like studying period tactics. Um, it's not like all like in Hollywood. 
Um, so it's, it's really about why are soldiers operating in, in this position and why are the manuals having soldiers move in this series of steps to get into this position? What are, what's the tactical value of that? Yeah. Because even though we're reenacting, there's a lot of tactics in gameplay that can really make or break a really awesome experience. Um, then uh, uh, soldier basics. Um, military courtesy, decorum, saluting, respect, yep. that sort of thing. And that's another part of just, first of all, for the event to run the way it's supposed to, you have to be able to take orders. Yeah, it's pretend rank, it's pretend power, but if you are trying to get a military experience at all out of this, then you need to play along with the pretend rank and the pretend power mm -hmm. so that everything can run smoothly and everybody can have a good time. Yeah. It, it's also just another part of honoring the military tradition that we're trying to recreate. Yeah, and it, it may seem like a lot of minutiae, but each one of those little details makes a better event for you. Uh, it gets you more into the moment, more into the history, and, and the more that you can live it, the, the more exciting it is and the more likely you are to stick with it. So um, learn how and when to salute. That makes a big difference. Uh, learn how to address a superior, uh, how to follow orders, uh, and be respectful. Um, mixed uh, company is also a big thing. So how do you act around an 1860s woman? Um, whether she's married or she's single, accompanied, unaccompanied, uh, whether it's in camp or out of camp. Whether it's somebody you even know or not. Yeah, that too. Um, so all of that is, is really important. And be sure to ask your NCOs. Um, but also too, as a, as a private, and especially as a new private, you might be thinking, oh, there's stripes, there's bars. I'm going to pester them with every question and need I possibly <laughs> have. Uh, <laughs> we, we, had a, we had a little stretch there where we had some growing pains. Um, but don't forget, you have veteran privates. Um, privates, being a private just isn't a holding pen, yeah. right? There, we have a deep wealth of knowledge in our enlisted, in our company alone. So ask your comrades. They have a wealth of reenacting um, experience and, and advice to share. Respect the chain of command. Yeah. Um, and then, yeah, this is, again, no particular order, um, but uh, safety. Safety is the most important thing, I feel. Yeah. Absolutely. And everyone is their own personal safety officer. If you see something that doesn't look right, then let everybody know. If somebody tells you to do something that doesn't seem right, then don't do it. Mm -hmm. It's as simple as that. You are responsible for your own safety, and you're responsible for the safety of everybody else around you. Yeah, and they can't help it if you're doing something stupid. Yeah, or if you do something stupid, like everyone, yeah, everyone else could be a victim. Um, yeah, make sure your your weapon is fully functioning. Replace any worn or damaged parts. Um, if it requires, if you need to take it to a gunsmith, take it to a gunsmith. Um, make sure your weapon is loaded and unloaded at the proper times and under command. Make sure you know what your safety distances are, and you can clearly tell them. Uh, same with artillery. Um, and CAV, know all your safety distances. It's absolutely critical. Um, and then in our unit, um, you know, uh, most of your reenacting organizations are going to have a, a safety test. Uh, we have one in our state organization. Uh, the, you know, we're infantry, so we only have to take the infantry test. We take the entire test. We don't do CAV, we don't do infantry, we don't do the engineering, but we want to know what their safety rules are and their protocol are just so we're safer on the field. Um, and so we can recognize the symbols and you know what the hubs up, uh, uh, the rammers look like up on the hubs of a cannon, so we know when to like cover our ears. It all makes a big difference. You are your own safety officer. If you don't know the answer to something, ask someone. Uh, don't, don't just try to assume when it comes to safety. Um, and then again, due diligence, uh, unit history, and impression history. Um, reenacting isn't just about buying a, a cheap Pakistani uniform and it's like, yeah, I'm a reenactor. It's like, well, no, you just started. I mean, <laughs> um, why are you reenacting in the unit that you are? Um, what is their backstory? Um, are you are you interested in doing a first person? Um, 
Do you know the individual soldiers that make up that unit? Is there one that speaks to you? Are you doing research? Are you studying their diaries? Uh, are you learning about the, the cultural history of that unit? That is also a responsibility of every ringing actor, and especially as a private as you're starting out. Um, okay, uh, yeah, duty and readiness. We're kind of getting towards the end. Um, the duty to follow orders and uh, to do so um, dutifully and to the best of your ability. Uh, to be agreeable yeah. is very important. You're not going to get very far if everybody in the camp can't stand being around you. If you are an absolute menace to everybody, then they're not going to want to be around you. You're not going to have a very long future in your unit or in the hobby. Yeah, and one of the things, um, you know, especially if you're a, a young reenactor uh, watching this, um, there shouldn't be a trail of your personal items from your tent to the company fly. Again, it goes back to being self-sufficient and self-contained. Uh, you use your items, and you put them immediately back. Um, if you leave out stuff, it becomes company property. <laughs> and you learn your lessons pretty fast with us. Um, but, yeah, and also, too, like, if you don't get along with the people in the unit that you start out with, or... In the unit that you... Yeah, there is a unit it's for a everybody. Um, so if you, if you try the unit, it's like, you know... You don't get along, maybe they think differently from you, maybe they're like different ages, backgrounds, whatever. Don't stick with it and be miserable. Say, thank you so much for you know getting me in the door. I'm more interested in this. Is there someone I can talk to? And they're going to help you. Find that unit where you can have fun, get along with people, be agreeable, uh, be agree agreeable, be supportive, have initiative, and help out your comrades. Um, yeah, and so also part of being agreeable is being helpful. Um, you know, helping out with uh, demonstrations, working with the public. Uh, sometimes, you know, as outgoing of a hobby as rain acting is, we have a lot of introverts. Uh, I, I think we're both kind of introverted, uh, but we're working with the public all day long and uh, doing all this education piece, and so. You may be kind of overwhelmed at your first couple events to kind of engage with the public, but talk about what you know. It doesn't have to be a lot, but hey, do you have any questions? It's like, yeah, do you sleep out here? It's like, yeah, we actually sleep out here. This is my first event. This is great. Um, and all that sort of like that back research really helps you uh, with activities. Um, it could be, um, you know, being a reenactor isn't about just going to the battle event that's closest to your house. Yeah. Um, your unit uh, really looks for your commitment and your dedication to the company at large. Um, obviously, you know there could be work or health or family commitments that can keep you away from, you know, multiple events or away from a whole season. But as long as you can communicate that to your unit, they're going to support you 100%. Um, but if you're given the bare minimum, your company is probably going to give you the bare minimum back. Um, and camp preparedness is another one. So if if you show up. And there's still lots of people that need help putting up tent flies or you know t uh, tents. Siblings usually take a few hands to put up. Um, don't just take care of your stuff and disappear. Uh, it's like yeah, you know, you you're bivouacking, you just run out of the bedroll, you're done. That doesn't mean you have no responsibility to to help out anybody else. Yeah. Participate. Um, and that yeah, like attendance. And participation really uh, build on the, the idea of consistency that you want to have as being a private. Um, show up, be present, give your best, be honest, be truthful, and yeah, don't be a menace. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, and I think I'll personally close on one old old saying. It's a bit cliche, um, but we like to remind ourselves of it in Company D. Um, and that's amateurs do it until they get it right. Professionals do it until they can't do it wrong. And I feel like that as, as a duty of a private, that, that could be a nice little stepping stone to kind of help see some of your uh, vast potential and responsibilities and duties to getting the most out of such a critical military role. Yeah, it is a very critical role. Uh, private, private soldiers are the vast majority of every army that has ever existed. And it's a very, very honorable impression to do. And there's mm -hmm. nothing wrong with being a private. 
for 10 years. I was a private for 10 years, and I strove to be an amazing private. <laughs> and that's the thing. You can be just an amazing private. You don't have to always be striving to be, I want to be the colonel. <laughs> you don't have to. Just take pride in your impression, even if it's a private's impression. Yeah, yeah that pride and dedication is, is one of the biggest things that, I, that is going to get you the most respect from fellow reenactors. Um, it's, it has nothing to do with our pretend rank. Um, it's about how committed you are to knowing your history, knowing your manuals, knowing your responsibilities, and being prepared. Okay? That's it. So, uh, yeah, it's uh, a not in order list. It's absolutely not comprehensive, but it should be a good start to uh, get you, getting you to ask some questions and have some conversations uh, with your company, your NCOs, your officers, fellow reenactors about the duties and responsibilities of a Civil War private. Uh, thanks so much for um, liking and subscribing. Let us know if you have any questions uh, or maybe you have your own personal advice for uh, duties of a private down in the comments down below. If you think you have a friend out there who could really benefit from this video, please feel free to share it. And if you have any more uh, questions about Civil War reenacting or Berdan sharpshooters, be sure to check us out at secondusss.com. Thanks as always for watching and we'll see you next time.